Why do we need data? And what do we need it for? Give examples of where I've seen data actually help improve lives. So answer yes to, to Matthew's challenge there. And then outlining, actually, if we're going to make that happen and happen on a consistent basis, what are the things that need to be in place across the, uh, the country in order for, for that to, to happen well? And I'm going to talk about research and statistics, but clearly there's a huge amount of gain from using data for other purposes. I mean, a recent report suggested that across the UK, somewhere between 16 and 33 billion pounds can be um, saved to the, public ex, um, uh, to the public sector from use of data better. And that's kind of through um, things like uh, reducing fraud, improving efficiency, uh, as well as um, avoiding any harms from not sharing information across public services that, uh, that, that we see sadly too frequently. So, to start off by saying something about the key challenge, and for me it's about public finance. So, our government expenditure and revenue statistics that were published in August showed that over the last year, public spending in Scotland is higher than the tax that we brought in. You know, and that's happened for the last couple of years. And while there are moves to reduce that deficit across the UK, it's unclear exactly how long that's going to take. What this means is there's ongoing financial challenge to the public sector. And this, though, it's fantastic that people are living longer. This, the financial situation is, becomes more challenging as people get older and need higher expense, uh, more expensive services. So I think it brings two opportunities for data for me. First one is the need to use data to drive performance within existing services, improve the efficiency and understand what works and invest in that. And then the second thing is the need to use data to transform the way that public services are delivered. The other element of the public finance constraints uh, and challenges is the significant pressure that that puts on us collecting and analyzing and, and using data. So we've seen earlier on during the year, we had a consultation about reducing the sample size of the Scottish Household Survey, for example. In the end, we decided not to reduce the, the, the size because we managed to uh, make the case for that. But I think it illustrates that there's ongoing pressure uh, on, on budgets. I think if uh, the Secretary of State, uh, or Cabinet Secretary for Finance was here, he would say, you know, if I'm making choices uh, between... Uh, investing in public services and investing in uh, surveys or, or things like that you know I don't I can't tell uh, doctors that I'm shutting things but that we've got a cracking Scottish house uh, health survey or a household survey so and that'll be an ongoing ongoing thing so using data to improve the quality and efficiency of services is where I'm at that's what I'm trying to achieve and I just wanted to, to run through three kind of examples of, of doing that in particular, a specific example around predictive analytics. This is using data about people, um, people or organizations, but in this case, people, to try and identify those that could benefit from preventative services, predicting those most likely to have quite negative outcomes or really good outcomes, and then putting services in place upstream in order to, um, to, to avoid those negatives or um, enhance those and bring out the positives. So, I used to, uh, before I worked here in Scottish Government, I worked in the Department of Health, and I worked on uh, about services for people with, with long-term or with chronic conditions. And what we found in the analysis of data is that 5% of people that use hospital services, which is a really small number, uh, account for half of all the, the use of hospital services. And that, that sort of ends up being sort of a few years, generally, a uh, few years of kind of ill health, and then all of a sudden there's a real chronic need for hospital care for a year, and then that re the rece that recedes. So the, the question was, could we actually predict these very high-intensity users, and could we put in preventative services to avoid that? Well, actually, there was a good preventative service to avoid that, um, a sort of case management service that uh, had been shown to reduce hospital use by 20%. Um, what we then looked at is, well, what's, um, what's, what's currently happening? And we found that GPs uh, have, have a way of trying to identify these people. And they, were, they weren't actually all that good at identifying these people that would 
over the next year need intense hospital services. They got it right about one in three times, which meant that they put this, this case management service into the wrong people. And while it, it benefited them, it wasn't necessarily benefiting the people that needed it the most. And so what we did is we uh, got uh, sort of a, a collaboration across a number of different universities, across the King's Fund uh, research uh, think tank in, uh, in England, uh, and they got data about people's um, health history or the history of using hospital services and said, oh, actually, could we predict those, those people that will um, have high intensity use? Now, actually, we found that we could. Instead of getting that, right, that decision right a third of the time, just due, by looking at the data by, uh, alone, you could get that right two-thirds of the time. And that is uh, a potentially massive saving, a saving of £100 million across England. Uh, and that, that was essentially rolled out to, to the NHS, uh, that the, there was a predictive analytics model that people around the country put their data into, and they changed the, the kind of nature of the people that, that, that were offered that service. And in fact, what they found is not only if they, if they didn't just look at the data alone, but they brought in a combination of data and professional advice, they would not get it right a third of the time, not get it right two thirds of the time, but get it right about three quarters of the time. And so what this meant is people living longer, people having a higher quality of life, and a significant saving to the NHS. And that was all by using data in a different way. Well, actually, there's, there's so much more potential there uh, with, with just looking at the health service. Um, you know, can, you, can we put in um, other preventative things upstream? And I know that there's, there's already uh, quite a lot of uh, history in, in doing something similar here in, in Scotland. Uh, but that's just one service. We're looking at a range of other things, uh, actually still within the health service, could you uh, predict for people that arrive in hospital uh, how long they're going to be in hospital, whether they're going to need social care services when they leave, and if so, what social care services, in order so that we can put those services in place sooner and avoid people hanging around in hospital unnecessarily. Uh, could we do that with, uh, with people leaving prison? Could we identify what are the, the mix of uh, interventions that work for a particular person by bringing together data about their offending history, the, the housing options, the, uh, the, the, the employment history, uh, and, and education history. So these are some of the projects that we're looking at at the moment to say, well, actually, we know that they can work in the health in a particular aspect. Can we use predictive analytics elsewhere? Uh, to, to, to have an impact upon the quality and efficiency of services and to transform our public services. We're, we're, in fact, we're, we're using quite a lot of data linkage now uh, across different services to understand what works because the data often across public services is quite siloed. So you, um, you go to school and you get a record about you at school. You get uh, go to hospital or a GP and you get a record there. But actually those are two bits of information about you that if you brought them together, they can tell you something quite interesting. So we're looking at a whole range of different things there. So for example, looking at um, the health services used by people that are homeless and asking the question, actually, are people that, that are in that situation, are they getting appropriate health care services? And if they're not, why not? And what services do they, do they need? Uh, we're looking at bringing together um, energy efficiency uh, program data, so which, which houses or uh, properties have got which energy efficiency measures on them, and combining that with smart meter data and home improvement data, or home assessment data, sorry, to understand actually which energy efficiency measures work for what kind of properties in which parts of the country. So data linkage can really help us to understand what works um, across the, the public services. And then the last thing that I would say about areas where, where we can make a, a significant difference is by using data to empower communities, uh, by making sure that our data uh, is available to people that, that need it in order for them to uh, set goals within their, their areas to secure resources and to measure success. And 
when I was, again, when I was at the Department of Health, I personally experienced the transformation of a community in, uh, in Cornwall. And local people were in, in, empowered to, to say, look, actually, I love living here, but what, where we're living is not good enough. And what, they, what we're able to do is ensure that people had the money, uh, sorry, had, had the, the data on crime, on unemployment, uh, on the health of the population, so that they could seek money, and they uh, secured qu quite a lot of money to transform that community. And what they found, uh, because we could, we could uh, use the data to measure success, was that actually, as a result, crime did reduce, unemployment reduced, uh, there was improved breastfeeding, people uh, reported that their community was uh, a, a different place to live. And we only know that because of the data that we had was available at a relatively small area level. Uh, and it was, yeah, it, it, was, it was a part, but it was a really quite an important part of transforming that community. I said that at the beginning, what I was going to say was, in order to do all of those things, the predictive analytics, the data linkage, the empowering communities with data, there needs to be a set of things in place. Some of those things happened because of the circumstances at the time. That it, there was a particular um, economic pressure. There was somebody with the skills in the right place at the right time. But I think what's important for me, if data innovation is going to happen widely, if it's going to have the impact that I think all of us here are hoping and uh, hoping that it will do, I think there needs to be some things in place that ensure that. <coughs> ensure that it can happen regularly. So I'd argue that there's four things. Uh, one is that there's accessible, good quality data that's well managed. There's trust in the way that data's handled, uh, that we've got great skills uh, around data engineering, and putting that data together and the analysis of the data, and that we've got a range of uh, the, the organizations, particularly I'm thinking for me in the public sector, but organizations have data-driven business processes. So they're changing the way that they work. And that forms the basis of our vision for uh, or Scotland's data vision. It's about moving from a situation where organizations are overly cautious about data protection, where data is held by organizations and not shared for that public good, to the situation where citizens are aware, are aware and own their own data and where it's shared securely. Uh, for the benefit and the impact that we were describing earlier on. Uh, so the first of these is about access to, to good quality data, well managed. And there's, you know, we can start with the, the problems that we want to, to solve, the opportunities that we want to solve, or we can start with kind of what data we've got, so that, that which might drive new innovative ways of, of thinking. But either one of those, we've got to know what data we've got. And you know, I, th I think that metadata, that discoverability of the data, which is why the, the, the work that the UK Data Service does is really important. Uh, and we, what we're, we've got a similar piece of work in the Scottish Government, um, looking and making the data that we've got um, searchable, the metadata searchable, so that researchers across Scotland, across the world, can see, actually, you've got some fantastic data in Scotland. The, there's going to be a secure process for, for accessing that, or there'll be a, uh, I'll mention something about that later, but that we've got, we at least know what data's out there. And I think the other part of this is uh, about widening the sets of data that we've got available for research, and I'm sure Bonnie may say something uh, about that later on. But knowing what data we've got is one thing, accessing it's something else, and we... Uh, there's an important piece of legislation that's going through at the moment, which is called the Digital Economy Bill. And we're pursuing this with vigour because what this should do is free up some significant UK public sector data sets for research. Uh, in particular, those data sets from the HMRC and DWP uh, around people's tax and, um, uh, and the benefits that, that folk are getting. Um, and, and companies' um, t tax situation. And clearly, there's, that's really sensitive data, and there's going to be very strong um, processes for, for accessing that. But without access to that, we can tell whether 
somebody comes out of prison and they, then they go back into prison. But what we can't tell is whether they go into work. They, we can't tell whether they're, they're receiving benefits. And therefore, we can't put in the most appropriate services for, for that group of people. The same for education. Um, people leaving university, knowing the, um, the, the, the payback on the investment that we make in schools, in higher education, further education, apprenticeships, and so on, uh, in terms of the, the kind of work that people get and the income that they're getting. This is why this digital economy bill, I think, is going to be really important for us. And, and again, having the legal power, I think, is not quite enough. People have got to have convenient ways of accessing and using data. And there are different aspects to that. So and we've launched recently our statistics.gov.scot open data platform to publish all official statistics or access to, to the, the statistics that underpin all official statistics about Scotland, and Bill may say uh, a little bit about this, but it's a significant contribution to uh, a Scotland-wide open data strategy, making that data available to people. I think stepping down from that, because that's about data that's non-disclosive, uh, what we're also looking at is exploring products that allow users to create statistically disclosure-controlled tables from underlying data sets. We're looking at the business case at the moment for investing in that, but it's got the potential to significantly open um, the, the lots of data sets that we've got. And I appreciate there's, uh, you know, the, the UK Data Service has got, um, got a tool that uh, allows some of that. What we're looking at uh, is, is potentially, uh, because it's disclosure-controlled tables, allowing... Um, access to, to all the, the data sets that, that we've got. But that's, a, that's some way off, and, and we're, we're looking at that uh, business case at the moment, or, or we will be soon. Then lodging uh, data sets with the UK Data Service. This is a yeah, vital resource, I think, for researchers, and we're an, an important contributor, but also an important user of that. And then the, for, the final thing is where it's really super disclosive data that's needed uh, we've invested alongside um, the NHS Information Services, alongside the National Records of Scotland, uh, and as part, uh, with ESRC and um, Medi um, MRC funding, uh, a safe haven for data at the, which is situated at the buyer quarter in Edinburgh. And that's a place where there's expertise that can bring together, uh, make available individual data sets, make available linked data sets, uh, to, to researchers ac across Scotland. Uh, I can't underestimate the, uh, the importance of, of that as a, as a research platform. So that's about access to data, good quality data. There's trust in handling the data. So having the legal powers to receive, process, analyze, and, uh, and publish that data isn't enough here. We need to have trust in, that, in those processes. Uh, Department of Health in England, where I used to work, had those powers around getting data from GPs, but was forced to stop its care.data project following public concerns. Because of situations like this, organizations are often cautious in handling and sharing data. And there's mixed advice about sharing. You know, generally in, in data linkage projects that we've had, where we are trying to link data from local authorities, for example, we've got 32 local authorities in Scotland, typically what would happen is 10 local authorities would come back and say, yeah, go on, link the data, that would be great. 10 would come back and say, no, our lawyers have said, no, we definitely can't link the data, that's not right. And then 10 would say, this is all too difficult. We haven't got lawyers in any way that can advise us on that. So I think there's something about the expertise that's needed in data law uh, in order to, uh, to make consistent decisions uh, around how we can use, how we can put data to use uh, legally and um, we also, uh, we've got now systems in place for secure data sharing and, and handling consideration of ethics and assurance to people about the trustworthiness of those handling, uh, of the way that we handle data. And all of that has got to be vital. Without that, we can't do any of the things that, that we're talking about today. Uh, uh, but I think there's something else, and that's ensuring that uh, people know what data's uh, available about them and, and what's done with it. I don't think we're, we're talking about people having complete control about the data, but increasing the level of control, I think, is important. Uh, and all of this is really tricky stuff, actually. Uh, we're considering about how we, how we 
take this forward across Scottish government and with, with partners across Scotland. But this is, uh, th this is big and it's something we need to get right because it's slowing everything down uh, at the moment. Uh, almost the, the last thing I'll say is about skills. Uh, having the right skills. Clearly, skills in this field, they're important, they're precious and very much valued uh, by employers. And that's skills in putting together, managing data, making it available for reuse. But it's also skills in the bringing new insights uh, by linking data sets uh, and using te techniques like predictive analytics that I mentioned earlier on. And finally, it's about skills in uh, communicating what that data is telling us. And those are all kind of traditional statistics, analytical, IT type skills. Some people call them data science these days. But I think there's, there's one more skill that, that's important. That's the skill of using data to make decision making uh, and, and driving improvement. So I think what we're trying to do in, in Scottish government is tackle skills at those three levels. The data science expert, uh, the, the analytical enthusiast, that, uh, and, and that intelligent customer, that decision maker, who needs to know when, when, yeah, could data make a difference to me? And if so, when? And I think, you know, we're, we're doing lots of work in conjunction with Gillian um, and the Data Lab on building, building skills and being really supportive of, of us and, and organizations uh, across Scotland and in um, getting those examples so that we can tell the story to people that, uh, that can use data differently to change the business processes that, that we're working with. Because I, I think that's it for me, demonstrating the value to, to those people of, of how we can use data differently. Using the examples that I've talked about today and that I'm sure others will talk about today. Uh, but also talking to people about the practicalities. What are the things that, if you're, if you're the leader of a um, hospital trust or the leader of a local authority or the, the leader of business, what are the things that you need to practically do and think about in order to make that data data uh, that, that organization data driven so i think that it's this is the the step that i think that we need to do in order for for data to to have impact so yeah we can't solve any of this alone we need to be working together uh, we need to uh, do those those four things that, that i was saying ensure that we've got accessible shareable good quality data that we're trusted in handling that data that we've got the skills and so of decision makers in using that data uh, and uh, th that uh, the, the businesses and organizations change in order to, to, to deliver that impact for people. If we do all of that, then very soon we'll be using data to improve the lives of people of Scotland. Thank you very much. Fantastic.